Well, in case you've been living under a rock, and by rock I mean the planet, as no one on Earth has heard of Crikey, its readership's so low that they should be legally forced to change their name to Cricket. Possibly Creaky, as the readership's also a bunch of fossils with dementia who've forgotten they signed up to this sort of charity for the middle class, I suppose, to assist struggling ex-ABC and Fairfax awful to write countless redundant articles that should all be dumped in exchange for a hyperlink to one that reads, Now that I have the freedom of the internet to say whatever I like, I write exactly Exactly what I would have written at Fairfax, except now my natural c**tiness as a human being isn't restricted. Win-win. I won their biggest award, Arsehead of the Year. Arsehead of the Year. Ha 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 Such a hubris name that was clearly brainstormed by products of nepotism that couldn't outwit Hamish McDonald, as it's not creative, but everyone was too nervous to object to it, so now they unquestionably drudge along with the name Arsehead. Ha 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 Arsehead. F these people suck. At everything, especially not looking like a c I know this is a tall order, but if we can all look past how B to the title is, the overall sense of it is truly an honour. The most hated people in Australia hate me more than virtually everyone else in Australia, which is an especially large feat, as the only person they appear to admire that's even geographically close to this nation is Jacinta Arden, which you can tell is for nothing of substance. But because she wore a hijab, so for a second we forgot that she's white. Because let's look at the authors of the article. If you peruse Charlie Lewis and Amber Schultz's extended tweets masquerading as work, they have that stock standard contempt for white people that all blue checks have for no reason other than their validation starved social circle arbitrarily condones it. Unless of course those whites are Italian then you can't make fun of them for reasons they just invented in this very article. Which brings me to the golden rule of this video. Don't even think for a second about asking the most basic of questions, which is, <clears throat> but why? There's no answer because no one's at home. If you x-rayed their brains, there'd just be one word floating in each of their empty skulls. Charlie saying heard, Amber saying mentality. A good example being that on this list of the worst people in Australia was Joel Fitzgibbon Ooh, for what I can gather was the crime of preventing a Labor safe seat in coal country falling to one nation, despite the fact that you just know they're those same dopamine addicts that would have thought, oh, is that just Cinta Arden under there and oh my god it's Pauline Hanson, no! Nominated for his horrendous environmental record of Voting for every last initiative that would have reduced carbon emissions on a federal level. No wonder his nickname is Cole Fitzgibbon! Meanwhile, Matt Keane, New South Wales Liberal Environment Minister who has seen New South Wales lag drastically behind the rest of the states in renewables, is responsible for some of the worst land clearing rates in the world, a thousand native species on the endangered list, and yet according to Charlie and Amber, he's one of the greatest human beings in the country. There he is, short list for person of the year for his environmental record. I told you not to think about this too deeply. There really is nothing to it other than Joel, unlike Charlie Lewis and Matt Keane, does not look like an aborted clone of Adam Bant, and so they feel threatened that Fitzgibbon is from an electorate where the bookstores don't have Kamala Harris's biography in the front window. Instead they have actual good books like The History of a Porter, which I would imagine is entitled The Real Game of Chicken. They also nominated Daniel Andrews for Ask Hat of the Year. You could do an entire video on each reason they gave. In fact, I already have on a couple as it was nothing more than the regurgitation of the same slimy, thoroughly deceptive smear campaigns that they were whining about him being the victim of in their concurrent nomination of him for Person of the Year. I know what you're doing. My girlfriend did the same thing when I told her that. She instinctively asked, but why? No, no, remember I said, don't ask basic questions. Instead, just think about how great it would be to see them both getting gouged by those running bulls in Spain. I also forgot to say you can't make fun of their culture either and no! I was nominated for the exact same done to death AUWU clips these lazy propagandists use over and over with no alteration to mould around the rebuttals. Like they're that stupid chump at the beginning of Idiocracy attempting to fit the cube through the circle saying, I saw on Twitter. Humbugs with the attention span of gnats who defend gnats. Yeah. 
I'm one of the worst people in Australia. And John Barillaro is a victim, apparently, of my Italian accent, which is hilarious as long as you're a time-travelling racist from 1972. Isn't it amazing that whichever one of those two wrote that sentence leaned back in their chair triumphantly, thinking to themselves, Yes, I am this generation's f***ing Hemingway. I reckon it was Amber Schultz, so she has this ego that she's quite the comedian. After all, she wrote for The Tonightly. Amber? You forfeited any right to comment on what is and isn't funny for the rest of your superfluous life just on that. Let alone your most egregious offence, which is also sadly your magnum opus, The Struggle. I'll give you this, it's aptly titled. I'll also give it something it's never had before, views. Big words are scary. Just this morning, I had a cup of dihydrogen monoxide laced with dicaphiolinquinic acid, sprinkled with disaccharide sucrose and topped up with lactic acid. Terrifying. <laughs> It's like watching a child present nutritional information they don't understand in a Cocoa Pops ad after the child's been drugged, yet somehow is still scared. Watch some more with that in mind. And don't be mad, Anne, but the reason I'm showing more is to give you an example of what it's like to be put in full context. This year's theme was Vaccines Work, highlighting a fact that has been around since the smallpox vaccination was developed in 1796. The Australian government... I understand that even the best comedians on earth are hit and miss. But all misses? Right up until I saw Charlie and Amber's passion projects, I honestly thought that everyone on earth had some form of talent. But Charlie's writing is best summed up by Bart Simpson saying... I didn't think it was physically possible, but this both sucks and blows. This is his first sentence in the follow-up, and keep in mind, he is a paid writer. The 2020 Crikey Awards, dash, already attracting well over 4,000 votes after a single day, dash. Do you think he's writing a telegram? Features a, brackets, as far as we're aware, end brackets, first for the competition, colon, someone campaigning to win the title of Arse Hat of the Year. Yeah, but Charlie, our campaigning was weaker than Amber's comedy. We crushed your entire audience in your most important annual tradition with, I think at the time, maybe two micro posts on not even our main channels. We then really kicked it into warp drive by putting it in text at the end of a 10 minute video. Beating you digitally was as easy as it would be to beat you in real life. You just put on a mask of Joel Fitzgibbon. Oh my God, I pissed my pants. Given a considerable chunk of Geordie's appeal comes from portraying himself as too dangerous for the hacks of the mainstream, of course he'd want to win. See, I really like this sentence. It shows how hack journalists live with the fact that they're about as popular as a parking officer with AIDS and a nosebleed. Apparently the secret source is, could I be a hack? No. It's your children who are hacks. I have never in my entire life had a meeting about marketing or PR or image consultation. Does it look like I have? The closest thing to that would be when my booking manager asked what picture would I want as my stand-up poster, to which I told her a photo of me as a clown naked. To which she replied, and this is true, I'll pick something nice. There's no trick that I've been able to cast over hundreds of thousands of people. My appeal comes from pointing out that you're shit. That's it. Rationalize it any way you wish, but the truth is as ugly as you, Charlie. And that is, and I'm the owner of a modern day freak show, and you and your blue check mates are the main attraction. You, you're the brand, Charlie. Dance for the people. I present to you the amazing pew-bearded boy. Of course he'd want to win rather than allow one of the far stronger candidates, dash, people he spent the year railing against, dash, to get some more bad press full stop. Bub, don't try and convince yourself that you're important enough to give someone bad press. Your articles get less likes than most of my friends' posts who aren't even attempting to be public figures eating a f***ing burger. And some of those friends are parking officers. I'll give you this though, Charlie, you did answer why there's this massive public demand to see why your ilk, hack journos, AUWU members, second tier Greens candidates writhe in agony like they're that fat vampire in Blade, which is exactly how you do react when someone shines a light on you, except with the invention of the internet, you now do this. Ha <laughs> man babies are totally not mad. <laughs> the reason is everyone can detect that you're those little shits in primary school that would kick you, so you'd kick them back, and then they'd scream, No! No! We're on the same team! Don't! I'd say that's the underlying message, but you wrote exactly that. It's that integral to your psychology. 
He's that annoying friend meme all grown up. And no, wait, actually, that's a bit too far. Rob Inglis is. Crikey's Arse Hat of the Year for 2020 is not the first winner to be a popular media figure who takes any criticism they get as evidence that they are just too much of a dangerous teller of incendiary truths for all the milk toast pearl clutches in the mainstream. Charles, was that the draft script for your subscription drive? So I think that the reason that journalism is crucial at the moment and why Crikey in particular is important is that 2020 has really seen a, an acceleration of a lot of the issues that we've seen creeping up on us over the last 10 years or so, in particular around the issue of the concentration of media ownership. We're seeing constant partisan attacks on the ABC. I think that makes it all the more important that small independent voices like Crikey are able to be heard across the media lab. You're stupid, Charlie. I honestly think my French bulldog steps in his own shit less than you, especially when your publication is just pedestrian masquerading as independent Australia behind a curtain of mystery. I don't think your criticism of me comes from you being too mild. Just in your nominations, you posted very extreme views like a man who is responsible for a mass ecocide. He's one of the greatest people in the country, wrapped in that trademark cuck snark that has made Crikey the exact opposite of a household name. The reason I think you don't gel with incendiary truths is because you're too vacuous to care what the truth is. It's not, you can't handle the truth. It's, you're a stupid dick. Case in point, describing my platform as quote, nominally left wing, nominally left wing. If you had done any research at all, which I should expect from you as that's your job, however I don't because it's you, you would notice that one of my biggest personal vendettas in life is going out of my way to stress the words like left, right, socialist, centrist, alt-right are spread by untalented, unwitting, propagandic tools such as yourself to distract people from the fact that you don't know what the f*** you're talking about. So it's time for some real incendiary truths that you won't be able to handle, Charlie. You ready? You're a worm. You have one tactic. Regal. Take for the fact that you were obviously bamboozled by what? Why are people angry at me for tacitly defending a fat species destroying hookster just for a quote, keck? Haven't they heard that me mom thinks I'm nice? So he then wriggled away from what he originally described as a defense of disgraced Labour leader Luke Foley, which if insinuating that Foley is guilty of his accusation wasn't defamatory enough, he then decided to upgrade that to, mm, no, actually, I changed my mind. It wasn't a defense of Foley. It was, um, friendly Geordie's defending sexual assault. The concept now. Now we're deliberately conflating the most heinous sexual crimes there are just to deflect from being owned online, are we? Now there's a selling point as to why people should subscribe to Crikey. Pay me to convince myself that I'm a good person. It's a niche! You actually think this has anything to do with him and Amber actually caring about what he's defamatorily deemed as sexual assault in the slightest? Well, here's Sirkin from True Crime Weekly with more. Hi there, I'm Seth Carlos Turk. I'm the publisher of True Crime News Weekly and an investigative journalist. Um, just a few weeks ago, some of you may have heard that Crikey first nominated, um, then allowed uh, Geordie to um, win the Ars Hat of the Year award. And one of their reasons was that he is a supporter of um, sexual harassment. Uh, but did you know that Crikey's own editor in chief is a notorious alleged serial sexual harasser widely known in the media? And while during his time at the Sydney Morning Herald where he was editor-in-chief, um, he was notorious for his pants-off management style and is considered by some sources as the granddaddy of sleazebags in the media industry. Um, one story is um, he tried to fire a photo editor at the Sydney Morning Herald after she rebuffed his um, awful sleazy advances and tried to conspire with management to get her fired. Um, they then backed down when she produced a detailed diary of his alleged assaults over a number of months. So that's Peter Frey, the editor of crikey.com.au. Crikey. You think Charlie and Amber are gonna nominate their boss for Ass Hat of the Year in 2021? Or themselves for staying silent? Especially after Amber posted this. Two in five women have experienced sexual harassment at work. It's pervasive, it's prevalent, and as recent cases have shown, it's not taken as seriously as it should be. 
Bo Pahari, Adrian Bo, George Corey, Dyson Hayden, the list of high profile men accused of sexually harassing co workers goes on and on and on. Well, I hope you're reporting on yourself in that exclusive, Ams. Especially after they asked the same press hack question of, is Labor gonna distance themselves from friendly Geordies? Well, are you gonna distance yourselves from crikey, you by your own criteria disgraces? I'm gonna bet they won't. And it won't be because they think Scott Morrison needs more negative press either. It'll be for the same reason that their art is soulless and their writing is hackneyed, and that's because they have zero convictions. I would describe them as mercenaries, but that would make them sound cool. This brings me to the one question I do expect an answer for. If you are a subscriber to Crikey, why? Why are you paying top dollar for what the ABC and Fairfax give out for free? You may as well subscribe to Invisible Magazine Monthly. It'll have the same impact. Serkin, on the other hand, from True Crime Weekly, that's Walkley winning material right there. That guy broke a story that one of these mainstream vats stole and then won the award with. He could do a lot better than Crikey and not for 200 f***ing dollars a year either. Check out his site, link below. And having said all this, Charlie, Amber, thank you. I sincerely mean that. You've inspired me to come up with my own award ceremony that I would love to see you guys rig. This would be absolutely sensational if either of you were the benefactor of the first annual Friendly Geordie's Peak of Human Evolution Awards. Which of the following journalists makes you think, wow, now there's a DNA dead end? Is it the Sydney Morning Herald's deputy editor slash Gollum's f***? Our brother, Michael Koziel. Is it moving corpse Lucy Cormick, or man who miraculously survived a vicious attack from an entire beehive, Fergus Hunter? But that's not all. Pigman from Vice could still be a contender, or perhaps the world's most illiterate journalist, Marriott Bilton Goff, who's so ashamed of her work that not even she wants to be associated with it. Could it be the lovable lump of dough, Stuart Little, who possesses the uncanny superpower of pissing his pants at even the simplest of questions? And speaking of blobs, who could forget Rob? Honestly, I did. It's because he has the same face as the rest of these shit but he also lives in a shithole. But keep moralizing while you're working for Anthony Catalano, Robbo. And finally, we have the spitting image of my less efficient testicle, which actually is nominally left, Charlie Lewis. Or his partner in crime, against comedy, permanently dehydrated Grinch, Amber Schultz. Who is the most sycophantic vacuum to a pathetic hierarchy of powerless c and who looks the most like that f***ed goldfish at a pet shop that has a bunch of white cottony spots on it floating upside down struggling to breathe? You vote, you decide. You like this video if you dare accept the challenge of determining which of these new males and new females is the very first peak of human evolution and therefore is the most neutral journalist of all time. Put it in the comments and buy a Jack Lang shirt to wash out your eyes with a real man, huh? Please share and comment below. Command. But why?